We are live. Mpiloza. Utini. Hello, Mpiloza. Yo, what up? Marcy Wilkes, what up? Today we're talking Jonathan Moyo. Listen, we all woke up to that to that interview. There's been disagreements in my household, and I thought we should talk it out with the people around us. I thought <laughs> we should talk it out. What up, Chef Bay? How you doing, mommy? Hi, hi, hi. How are you, babe? Thanks. Fantastic. Listen. Uh, waiting for some people to join us. Please some join people to join us. Listen, we all woke up to the How's Jonathan the day Mkwenya are bored. The guy who came off riding, we all wish he stayed in hiding. You know what, Marcy? I've been having this argument this morning with the with with the lovely Nomalisa Ngube, and she she seems to believe that there's some sort of merit to what this idiot was saying. So I thought we should discuss it with everybody involved. We are we got 43 people watching. Let's go straight in. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's having a good lunch time. This morning we woke up to Jonathan Moyo on hard tour with Zainab Zadawi. It was a it was a disappointing interview, ladies and gentlemen, to say the least. Agreed. Disappointing interview. Because we were expecting some fireworks. Expecting some fireworks. Anyway, um, subsequently after the interview with Jonso, we had the rebuttal from George Charamba on Capi Talk, which was equally disappointing. Uh, very lame, stupid duck arguments where they were in this, it's now basically name calling left, right, and center. People's walls, people like Mpeloza, who's watching right now, believe that Jonathan Moy is a genius. They think he was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> people, all right, so let's let's make concessions. Go let's ahead. make concessions. What you Jonathan Moy said, firstly, that interview was crap. Let's all agree. I agree on that, right? Holistically, the interview was shit. But I agree to certain things that Jonathan said. His holistic argument was that the means does not justify the ends because if the means is wrong, then the end is wrong. Firstly, Nangagwa's government is illegitimate because we all have agreed in the constitution that a government is elected by voting and Nangagwa was not elected by a vote of the people. Full stop. Our okay. always argument is that what happened 14 November was a coup by military movement in having found justifications because the constitution has got loopholes and making it constitutional does not make it constitutional. Therefore, it remains a coup. Jonathan Moyo was right about that, right? The holistic view that Zimbabwean people find it okay and then Sadrak says it's okay and then the UK says it's okay does not make it okay by constitutional arguments. Do I like the fact that Robert Mugabe is out? Absolutely. Do I like Nagago as president? We do need a president. So put somebody in there whilst we wait for elections. Then it's going to be a different argument later. So Jonathan Moore was okay. right in that space. That's all I'm saying. Jonathan Moyo's escape. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't believe there was a coup. I believe that it was a not coup because the president, even after the military occupation, fulfilled his legal obligations as a president. He attended the crowning of um, uh, Chief Chibengwa, uh, General Chibengwa's wife. He did. He actually gave a speech as president a day before he resigned. He, he no, was, no, 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 no. Well, hold on, hold on, mommy, hold on. The nigga gave a speech as the president of the republic. Flagged he did not make a speech said, that day. He did not on, make a speech. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. He, he, he constitutionally made a speech where he said, I have not been coerced into making this speech. And yes, there may be questions about what they did, but I believe that they, they were working in the right spirit to get rid of a criminal cabal. So I stand on the assertion that there was no coup. There was no okay. coup. Okay, okay. All, all I'm saying is the definition of a coup is when a military moves in without the command of the commander-in-chief to start making governmental decisions, which is what happened. I said they managed to justify it constitutionally because the constitution has its own loopholes. But that was a coup. But let's keep moving because Jonathan was right on that basis. But Jonathan's arguments about constitutionalism don't hold water. They don't hold water when all of a sudden he wants to justify constitutionalism when he hasn't practiced it, especially on people who have been activists in terms of uh, freedom of speech. He can't start talking about that when most of us have gone to prison 
for the fact that we speak out our minds. And he's one of those people who make sure that we go to prison a night or two because we said what we think. So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. We are not allowing Jonathan to have that right all of a sudden because he didn't do that when he was in government. Right? Right. Okay, so... I want to cheer. I want to cheer. I want to no, cheer. Stay away from me. You, okay, you, 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 you stay away from me. I'm walking away from you right now. Listen. Walk, walk away because I'm getting I'm, a cheer. All right, cool. Get a, get, get a chair. You can sit there. I'll, I'll go on the other side of the house because we disagree on this so badly. Um, <laughs> in watching Jonathan Moyo speak today, it made my stomach turn. You see, Jonathan Moyo speaks with such verve and such bitterness. What Jonathan Moyo refuses to understand is that as he was propping up Lady Gaga and that mad regime and, 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 and propping up that dynastic bullshit that he was trying to, to squeeze down our throats, he, 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 he forgets what he did to people like me. He forgets what he did to people like Pastor E. Or what, what, what he did to people in the, the, the Republic of Zimbabwe. He forgets the brutality and, and, and what they did to people during um, Ngrigini, during Munwesem Road. What they did to Patson Zamar, what they did to Linda. When a, when a mother of five has to show her buttocks in court. This is Jonathan Moyo's doing. Right, so he he forgets all that shit and stands there on a high horse talking about constitutionalism. We went on the streets. Vanuagata Gaiti Square went on the streets to say to the army, thank you very much for doing the heavy lifting and getting rid of these motherfuckers. Now, we don't have to like the outcome, but at least they got rid of those motherfuckers as far as I'm concerned. And they did it in a very clear yeah. way. The clear way means that but there was no enough. coup. Everybody then, in the country has agreed there was no coup. We wouldn't have marched for a coup. We're not stupid. We, 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 I'm do, a, I'm a, we do not have a referendum to then decide was this a coup or not. We allowed bigger guns like the UK, Sadak, and whoever tell us that it was not a coup. Like I said, the problem is that when you ask me, did I want Robert Mugabe and Lady Gaga gone, right? Yes, I did. So by all means necessary. I mean, I, I've had times when I ask anybody with a gun to put a bullet in Jonathan and Lady Gaga's head. If I had that gun, I would have done it. So if the army did it for me, Thank you. But are we saying that I agree that Jonathan Mayo was on a high horse and he doesn't deserve to be the one crying for constitutionalism. We're happy with that at that point. But going to elections, which George Charamba highlighted so nicely on Capitol, that elections are coming way earlier than we may think, right? Right. Are we ready to go against an army that has bullets by which they used to make sure that they overthrow a government that was elected by the people. And when we are about to elect anyone, even if we had to, in our darkest, deepest, dirtiest minds, vote for Morgan Changirai to be president, will General Chiwenga, as retired as he sorry, is, sorry, sorry, decide... Sorry, sorry. sorry, let me clear my ears, let me clear my ears. I think I thought I heard something stupid like vote for Morgan Changirai, hold on. Clear I said, in let our darkest, deepest minds, if we were sick, <laughs> I mean, if we were sick, would we do it, right? Say we all vote. One day we wake up and Morgan Changirai has 90%, ha, 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 of the vote, right? Would General Chiwenga and Nangagwa let Morgan Changirai be in the seat because that's the will of the people? I doubt it. Hold I on, doubt it. Here's what I, be, here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I don't believe the Zimbabwe military has enough bullets to kill all of us, number one. Number two, I but don't some believe of us that won't die, nigga. Do you want to die? Do you want to die? I'll die for a year. I don't want to die, but I will. Like, all I'm saying is... I, this, I won't this, let you die, this, but then anyway, I don't want to die for it. So I don't, I don't want to die so that people in the UK can come back and stay after we've been struggling out here. So it matter that people will die, and we're not out here trying to make sure anyone dies. But let's hold not up, get lost up, in the hold conversation. Up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know in our relationship you're the smartest and most talkative, but I would like, I would like to have a no. word in. Um, <laughs> put it this way. I don't believe if the people of Zimbabwe get a chance to vote and they vote their will, the army can step in the way because I think the Zimbabweans have tasted something called freedom. They've tasted a little taste of being able to make a change with their own voices and their own actions. I don't believe the Zimbabwe Republic Army right now will aim and shoot at its citizens. I don't believe so. And I believe that if we do elect a new president, let's say, for example, <laughs> Kosana Moyo. <laughs> I, I know, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> let, See, let, my let's example say, is better, but okay. Yeah. Let's, let's say just say goes on on in and, and he wins. I don't believe that if he wins and it's the will of the people, we then say, and then they refuse to give him the keys to state house, and then we say, fuck this. And we, I, I don't believe that the army will turn on us because I don't believe that there's, there's more of them than there is of us. I believe that we as the citizen, we now have more power than we had before. 
after the 14th of December, we now have more power than we did before. And we should not give up that power now. Right? Uh, no, no, no. I don't believe. I feel like we're lying to ourselves. Don't play yeah, yourself, know, son. The only reason why I we went on the streets was because the army said they won't go against us. The moment the army stands on the other side, ain't nobody going to be out here on the streets. Don't play yourself. Don't play I'll, yourself. I'll be there. I'll be there, mommy. I swear to God, I'll be there. Yeah, and then they'll beat I, your I, buttocks I, up again. Don't, fine, don't, don't, play don't play yourself. Don't play yourself. The only reason why most of us went on the streets was firstly, we just wanted the carnival, Joe. The secondly was because the army was on our side. If it had to be the citizens versus the army, whether they are shooting us or not, if the army guy stood over there, you saw it the day we marched. They stood over there and there's one of him and he says, no, that direction, you know where Zimbabweans are going to go. The, the legacy of fear in Zimbabweans has not departed because Robert Mugabe went. The legacy of fear still stands as long as the junta says yes or no, people will follow the instruction of the junta we're just good soldiers let's just put it like that we take instruction that's why we can be chosen lead us through. straight from zanu pf okay. to mdc that's why we have to let somebody else choose a leader for us right but let's go back to a jonathan moyo argument i mean the coup not a coup i'm happy it happened whatever right let's go back to jonathan moyo right. the other concession that i wanted to make that jonathan moyo puts up is that when he he, he can't discuss immunity with an illegitimate government in as far as he is concerned so he's not coming back nobody knows where he is right. do you think Nangago is concerned but, about where well, he, Jonathan I'm is con I, I'm very concerned about a person with Jonathan Moyo's money for example him and Lady Gaga they have a lot of money I'm very yeah. concerned about those kind of people running around outside with impunity organizing coups and hiring Somali uh, uh, Somali mercenaries Rebel. to try and cause cuck in our country I, I mean, let's I'm not underestimate our they... army. Let's not underestimate no, no, our I'm... defense forces. But let's not also underestimate Remember... people like Johnson and Kasukwere's resolve. All I'm saying Those is, if the United there... States of America, if the United States of America and the UK tried to invade Zimbabwe through Botswana in in 2008, they failed because the Zimbabwe defense forces pushed back. I don't think Lady Gaga's money and Jonathan's money can manage to stage another coup as clean as the one that. Nangagwa has. And anyway, they'll have a clapback from the international community because they recognize what happened as not a coup. They recognize what coup. happened as not a coup. Right? So, not a coup. holistically, can we just agree that Jonathan Moyo's uh, interview was stupid? Yes, but I think he's... The thing is, you, you are saying that he had some points. And I don't... I thing is, even a broken clock is right twice a day. I don't want us to give John so any credit. For, for, for being suddenly the most woke politician in the world because now he's in exile, plotting a comeback in Zimbabwe. Uh, what I'm saying to you guys is this. The, the army for me, the one big failure the army did for me was letting Savior and, and, and Johnson go without them also having to face some form of justice. It, it's, it's, it's important for, for the people that were brutalized under those guys' hands. For them too to also come and face the justice that look i don't believe in retributive justice and i also don't believe in this uh, factional justice that's currently happening but i'll take it for now for now i'll take it right and okay. i think it's a good starting so, point so so what you're saying is that we're happy for criminals to arrest other criminals solely because we think that the other criminal did us wrong say therefore let them arrest each other i think because jonathan moore believes so much in international law the our government should get them back, whether they are repatriating them from wherever they are, then our government should exercise that right, right? For as long as they are not touching Jonathan, whatever he says on the international stage shouldn't really be of uh, much value. But what he said as an individual, I'm, I don't want to attack his character because I don't like Jonathan. But solely on what he said, he had valid issues that we must look into as a generation that wants to use constitutionalism as the only form of governance in the future. We must definitely look into that. There's no way we can let the army that is run by an elected government do as it wills. We now have a whole government run by military people, which we're happy for. I've, I've always declared that I'm happy for a military state as long as there's order and there's progress because I think democracy over development does not work, right? That's what I've always said. But we cannot in the near future think about that. Unless if we're saying that 2023, because I'm not thinking about 2018, 2023, we need to look into a government that has proportional representation. That means that we have to have first choice, third choice, second choice, and third choice in our election system, such that everyone else is represented because there is no way we're going to go back to being one 
uh, ruling party and one opposition. That's gone. Well, I, We're I, never I going agree to with you. I, 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 dislike, I dislike the first past the post system. I think it's, it's flawed. I think it's given us the rise to these two juggernaut parties which are not fit for purpose. And I think if we did manage to get a, a proportional representation system similar to Australia and so forth, what we do get is a much more representative government of the will and the people. So, for example, people in Matebeleland, for example, then won't be so uh, begrudged for the fact that they're having to yeah. vote for these big juggernauts in Arare. And people in Mutare, people in, in Vic Falls and stuff, we can actually have a proportional system which makes everybody represented in a fairer way. So in, uh, on this one point, Chef Bay, we can agree that we would like proportional representation as part is enshrined in our new constitution in 2023 when you are now MP of Gutu Central or something nice. <laughs> <That's niche. laughs> um, so so, 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 so let, let, let's move the argument further now, people. Uh, we Let's go to George Charamba. Over. George Charamba is um George Charamba's argument. Response. Oh, what, what was your take? Okay, so that was on Capital. If you've not heard George Charamba's response to Jonathan Moore, you have to go to the Capital SoundCloud and listen to it. It was equally pathetic, yeah. but it was. Very I think his attack on the, on the human being and not on the points was very weak. I agree, and also some of the things that he said, some of the things he articulated were very, very insightful. Uh, when you're talking to a guy who has the ear and the eye of the president. Um, for example, he said things like, the election is coming way before any of you even can imagine. Those are his direct words. He said, the election is coming before you can even imagine. Because the, mm -hmm. woman, then that would say, so the, the woman had said uh, elections are in August, and he said, no, they're way before you even imagine. Uh, what, what was your yeah. take on that? Because it, it kind of shook me at this nonchalantness and how he was talking. It was very weird. I, I have concerns for, for, for a few individuals. People like Nelson Chamisa, do not take that chinu right now. You're going to lose badly, my nigga. Go for your MP seat and be in government and prepare for 2023. Right now, let Kupe or Muzuri take that shit because they're going to lose. That's the truth of a matter. MPC has not done anything. <laughs> if in March, it's going to happen. I love Nelson Chamisa. Do not ever lose. And right now is not the time to take that chinu. Let anybody else take it, not you go get your MP seat. We need you in parliament as one of the smartest minds to push a different agenda, right? Secondly, for people who are independent candidates, to me, it's said and it alarmed people like Vimbaim Shaburi. I see you in Harare. Where are you? Your constituency needs you. Go back there and start campaigning, which means that everyone who's not in a political structure like MDC, and if you want to win your seat or your council seat, if you want to announce for council, your time is now, my niggas. You won't have time if the election is anytime soon. Can you please get your shit in order? Secondly, George what, Charamba what, mentioned what, the what, fact what, that... Monachi, okay, first of all, let me talk with Bay. who said, today, no snoo snoo. Uh, that's been done. Tell him it's been done, babe. Uh, oh, uh, so, now you know. It's not going to happen in the morning. <laughs> in the morning. Uh, when I say that goes, please let MDC decide. Viva Chamisa. We believe, and I think we're in a unanimous position here, babe, that if Chamisa yeah. takes it right now, he's going to lose badly. He's going to lose. Um, yeah. and, and that's not because he's not, a, he's, not the, he's not. He's my preferred candidate. But I'm saying Same that here. right now, I think the, the ZANU PF wants to spring a surprise election maybe in April, and I don't think we have enough time to build a Chamisa across the nation yeah. for a presidency. So I would rather somebody else. You take win it in Mount Pleasant. <laughs> Anzi, the only independent guy who win is Ms. Padzai. That's you know, true. You know That's very true. Because she's I, I been working this whole time. Well, I hope Linda does well also in Central. I mean, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's hard. It's a, I mean, look, this whole, what happened on the 14th of December disrupted everybody's agenda. Now, unless these independent candidates could rise above the coup, not coup, and keep, and, keep the, and keep the pressure on their constituencies for the votes, then they're not going to win because people are right now don't care. People, people seem to be happy with this junta government. Now, I'm not, I, I, I've always told you, Bay, that if I had a choice to vote for vice president, I would always vote for uh, General Chibane. General Bay. General Bay to me, right? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you my reasons why I like General Bay, right? And I'm not, notice I'm not saying MSM Nagago. Quickly, 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 yeah, quickly tell us why. I'm not, saying, I'm, I'm not saying an ED, right? First of all, the few times I met General Bay, he's been a very smart, young, uh, intelligent dude when I spoke young, to him. And young, young, comrade, retract oh, young. Retract young. <laughs> retract well, young. You're younger than the president. Secondly, the reason, another reason is that 
as a man who used to be brutalized and beaten by the police, I love driving in Zimbabwe right now. I love driving in Zimbabwe right now. So, in, in a sense, I give the credit for, 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 for the new Zimbabwe command streets to the General Bay. So maybe that's my... my I'm, I'm biased towards right. General Bay. Um, so, Let, so when people talk about the junta in bad ways, I, I can't be angry at General Bay right now. I, I, it'll take me a lot of time and maybe a year of no snoo snoo for me to be angry at General Bay. But anyway, continue. <laughs> we might just consider <laughs> that. But anyway, let's let, let, let's go on to George Charamba's submissions on Capitol, right? So George Charamba also tells us that. Um, uh, what what Jonathan is saying about le the legitimacy of the government has got not he he doesn't want to argue legitimacy because he's clear that it's not legitimate but then it's functional. Right. Right now, are, are we in agreement with that? So you're saying the government currently is not legitimate but it's functional. It's a functional government, but it's not a legitimate government according to the standards of what a government that is elected should be. One. No, no. I, I, I believe because because it was in a coup, uh, and because that and because the president resigned and he was written in the parliament, uh, and then obviously the the person who was then in charge next was obviously the guy who was appointed as vice president. So I the guy was that fired last week before he ran a coup. That guy right here, nigga. That guy was fired. Remember, he was very much fired. No, <laughs> those are semantics. Those are semantics <laughs> by by a G40 cabal. <laughs> hey, hey, and then. <laughs> Anyway, let's, let's not get it twisted. So George Charamba also admits that the 2013 election was won by the junta. And let not Jonathan yes, get confused. That was, that, was, that was crazy. That was that crazy. Was crazy. Now, listen, everybody, you have to go listen to the Capital Radio uh, podcast that was done by George Charamba. It was very he interesting. He says to Moyo, Yo, Moyo, what's your problem anyway? You have to remember who gave us the, who, when we lost the election in 20, 2008, who was the same nigga who's in charge now, the nigga who got a The same nigga that you're talking about. Yeah, then he goes, <laughs> then he goes. In, in, 20, in 2013, well, uh, 2013, who else delivered the electoral victory for us? It was the same guy who's the president right now. This is the word of the president's spokesperson on national radio. I was gobsmacked. The junta has been controlling shit for damn near, damn near 10 years. So we're happy to have a military state. At least it's now very clear. It's no longer a secret. A military state is better than the one that's captured by the military and said to be a constitutional government. No, I, th I just think the military needed... Okay, look, let's agree on one thing. The military is now in charge. Whether it's constitution... I mean, constitution, not constitution, they, they're now in charge, right? Um, yeah. And... Uh, and look, we're exercising I, I, I must, freedom. <laughs> well, put it this way: um, well, well, George Karamba is on a way in your form, in your in your in your in your court of the argument. He, George Karamba said, "You know, we are happy for you to exercise your freedoms of expression, freedoms of assembly. We're not going to get involved in any of that." But don't, don't, don't take that away from me. Yeah, to the table. And that George Karamba can have a good demonstrator. That was, George Charamba's interview was mind-blowing. And I think I recommend everybody who's here to go and listen to that one. Um, listen to George Charamba's interview. is mind-blowing. That gets you into the mind of the junta and the way they think. They believe, look, we, we've, we've done, been rigging these elections for damn near 10 years. Now we've given you a, a nicer version of it, a more sanitized version. In a sense, they're saying get on with it. And I think this is, um, this is what I got from Jen, uh, George Charamba. Here's the last one from George Charamba. Every one of these old guys who have been in government as a civil servant are ready to step down and let a new generation, the likes of the Lulus who have been back in MGC, who are back in ZANU PF, to take over. And those guys are not seated guys. And Alumumba, they are in these think tank meetings trying to make ZANU PF swag here as fuck. Can this people is, get in that... order because the new ZANU PF is about to look? Way better than the yellow campaign. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. But it's about to look yeah, really you, clean you, and you, nice. You better, you better be joking, you better be joking. Listen, <laughs> I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much, right? George Sharaba was asked, you are my nigga. Okay, Todd and everyone else, the interview is available on Cappy Talk. There's, it's as on their SoundCloud, we'll try and put out the, the, the link. I'll put out the link for you, it's on Cappy Talk. Now, he, here's what George Sharaba said when asked, you know, you said when Mugabe goes, you're going to retire. What is the what's what's the deal? And he says, ah, anyway, you niggas don't know what's gonna happen after the next election. 
a lot of us have got other ambitions. We want to be lecturers. We want to go back into academia. I want to play with my children. I want to be I want to write some books. I want to be a farmer. You know, I'm a farmer, blah, blah, blah. So we mm. want to, he says, we're spending the next couple of months to down, what do you use the word? Download. We're downloading yes, the information. To download into to the, the next new generation. generation. So, guys, whether you like it or not, these Zanu guys are on some, they're thinking next, next shit. So, I, I, that, that to me was like, you need to get oh, on oh, that thing. You need, you need to be, we also need to be building governments in waiting. We need to be giving, building new yeah. people coming up, even in the opposition ranks. You see, people like me are now too old. We need 18 year olds who are as passionate about politics. Because I tell you what, right? We need to be downloading to a new generation ourselves. Because these guys have already started building a new generation for themselves. And we will see these guys in power forever if we're not careful. Um, and, and, I, and I genuinely, my heart, don't want that. Um, because I, do, I don't think we should be rewarding criminals, uh, murderers, and rapists, personally. Anyway, I'll let you finish off, Chef Bay. Let's go. No, okay. So we, we pretty much wrapped up the, Zanu, the, the, the Jonathan Moe versus the George Charamba argument. My, 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 my last word standing, Jonathan Moyo is an individual, has no right saying those things. Had it been anyone else saying it, had it been Pastor E saying it, would have been agreeing because he had some valid points to, to send. But then Jonathan Moyo speaking to BBC about the will of the people is absolute bullshit. And I think that yeah. BBC is very lazy for looking for people to have interviews with them on Hard Talk. But anyway, that was good entertainment for us. I, I enjoyed watching that interview. Angachi Kakama, his swag of being a political scientist was gone. I'm sorry, Piloza, but there's nothing that... Jonathan Moyo said yesterday on BBC that makes that interview fire. It was not fire. It was damn right whack. Okay. John, George Charamba, thank you so much for giving us insights to what's about to happen. We're about to step up on our, on our campaigns. Anyone who's got their campaign going on, if you're going to, if you thought you were going to announce for being counselor, your time is now. Do not slack or else wasara and the last word to the my most favorite person nelson chamisa usa tore chinu because ucha unga tati into ngoba uzaluza let's talk zani kupe omzuru take that shit we are ready for you 2023 45 nice and healthy you're still young there is no way you're going to win this one oh, you just have to let this one go Sorry? Who do you think is going to win, babe? This election. The junta. Mm. It's obvious. It's like whoever is playing with the junta is going to win. Uh, uh, Jonoro is instigating the ground issue. Uh, I'm about to come to you. I think I'm, I'm done with my anger. Can I come to you? Get someone yeah, else to call to in? I'm in the pond. Come in the pond, babe. Okay. All right. Call, call someone else to call now. in. Thank you. Uh, all right, cool. So what Bay joins me? Um... We, we would like to add a couple of people. Uh, I'm adding my sister Marcy Wilkes.